I'm Amelia Wiggins, Educator Public Programs at the Stark Museum of Art, and I'll take you through the making of medieval manuscripts uh, in conjunction with our exhibition, Medieval Manuscripts, here at the museum. So in the Middle Ages, books of ours were made from different art supplies than books would be used, made from today. Instead of paper, uh, medieval bookmakers used parchment or animal skin, like the calf skin on view here in the case. A calf skin in particular is called vellum, but parchment or animal skin was also made from sheep or goats. The skin would have been um, pulled from the animal, soaked in water and lime to dehair it and to take out some of the fat or grease, stretched on a frame, and then scraped until it was thin, um, similar in thickness to our paper today. Once the parchment was prepared, uh, it would be cut into rectangles to be used as pages, and those would go to the scribe, whose job it was to write the text of the book by hand. And instead of using a pen like we have today, he would use a quill made from a feather from a goose or a swan. The feather would be heated in hot sand and cut into a nib that could hold ink. Scribes also had to make their own ink by hand. Um, they would use a growth on an oak tree called a gall to make a dark tannic ink uh, that was very permanent. And then the scribe would write each letter of each word by hand. He wasn't the author, though. A scribe would usually be writing um, from a previous text, copying the letters. And in the early Middle Ages, scribes were mostly monks working in a monastery. But in the late Middle Ages, um, when books like the ones on view here were written, those scribes were usually secular professionals working in a group of craftspeople to produce the books. A scribe might carry his pens in a tool called a penner. That's that leather case here in this display. And the penner is what we saw St. Mark's lion holding in his mouth in one of the illuminations in the books here on view. Once the scribe had written all of the text of his page, and ruled the page, it would next go to the illuminator, whose job it was to illuminate or light up the pages of the books with illustrations. And the illuminator also had to make his own paints, usually from organic materials such as minerals, plants, and from um, insects occasionally. He would grind up the mineral or other material and then mix it with glare or egg whites until it was in a liquid form. The most precious paint was lapis lazuli, um, came from lapis lazuli, which was a semi-precious stone from Afghanistan used to make a brilliant blue. And that blue often was used uh, on the garb of the Virgin Mary uh, to symbolize her importance. Once the um, paint was mixed, the illuminator would first start by adding all of the gold leaf used on the uh, most special parts of the illumination. And gold was created from um, hammered cold gold coins beaten until they were thin to form leaf and then glued to the page. And only after the gold was, da was down would the illuminator start to paint all of the details with his colors. Once the pages had been written and illuminated, they would be folded and nestled into gatherings of four pages, like the one on view here. And then those gatherings would go to the bookmaker, whose job it was to sew up the codex or the book block. And he would use a sewing frame to keep the pages aligned. And then once the book was sewn, he would add covers of wooden boards uh, covered in leather. And then the front of the book would often be decorated with metals and semi-precious stones and leather toolings uh, to make them into the objects of art that we appreciate today. Uh, do you know how long it would take someone from beginning to end this whole process to put a book together? It could take over, it could take years. Um, like I said, oftentimes, especially in the late Middle Ages, there were craftspeople working together in a workshop setting. So sometimes there'd be more than one illuminator working on the book. Um, an apprentice could do the lesser illuminations and the master would do the most important miniature. Um, depending on the size of the book, over 100 animal skins could be used for the pages alone. So the process was very intensive and could take quite a long time. 